Well, thank you and welcome to District Dialogue. Uh, I'm Commissioner Henry Mitchell, District Wine Commissioner of Douglas County, and we've got a great program in store for you today. Today, we're going to talk about economics or economics. However you want to kind of say that word, <laughs> we'll let you determine that. However, we're going to talk about what's happening in Douglas County, kind of where we came from, where we are, and I've got some ex some great guests that's going to kind of help us out and get a true understanding of what's happening right here in Douglas County. To my left, uh, to your right, <laughs> I always want to say that. <laughs> um, I've got Sarah and Chris. Uh, Sarah's with the Chamber of Commerce and Chris, you're with the, uh, the De Development Authority. But why don't we do this first? Why don't you introduce yourself to the District Dialogue uh, viewers and tell them kind of who you are, kind of what you do and kind of I guess how you got here and Chris you'll do the same so Sarah we'll start with you. Sure um, well thanks first of all um, thank you Commissioner Mitchell for having me today. Um, I'm Sarah Ray I'm the president and CEO of the Douglas County Chamber mm -hmm. and have been I've worked there for about 12 years took over as CEO about four years ago. Who was the person you took up from? I, oh Callie. Yeah, Callie I, know, I, I just yeah. want you to say that. Yeah. Um, yes and so I grew up in Douglas County I'm a product of the Douglas County school system went away to college and literally made my way back down I-20 um, to work in Douglas County. So um, the chamber promotes and supports businesses and helps um, create opportunities for them to grow and thrive in our community. So happy to be here. And we're going to talk a lot yes. about that though. So thank you again, Chris. Yeah. So once again, glad to be here uh, with you this, uh, mm -hmm. this afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Pumphrey. I've been here in Douglas County leading economic development uh, starting with the Development Authority back in 2011. Um, so we uh, manage the Development Authority for Douglas County, uh, the City of Douglasville Development Authority, and our most recent public-private partnership called Elevate Douglas. So um, it's a public-private partnership for community and economic development here in the community. Um, I'm not from Douglasville. Uh, I grew up- We will hold that against you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a transplant like most, most right. Atlantans are today. So I, I came here to go to college uh, and just did not want to go back home. So I planted my roots here, uh, raised our family here, and we're just glad to be able to support economic development here in Douglas County. Well, we're glad that you're here. But, but let me back up just a little. So Chris, what did, how did you come about getting to Douglas County or Douglasville? Meaning, I think you came from the state. Mm -hmm. We kind of uh, did some research about you and found out you were probably the best to come here to kind of move this whole economic development here in Douglas County. So. Yeah, so um, I started out in community development, uh, working at the Atlanta University Center. Uh, then I went on to do statewide economic development for the Georgia Department of Economic That's Development. That's where we stole you from. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> and so um, I really wanted to look at different opportunities, something where I could really kind of dive in and get my hands dirty and really kind of help create a vision and see the fruits of that, that vision come, come about. So um, we made a decision between a, a few communities and we felt that Douglas County had a lot of promise. Uh, and so decided to, to come to Douglas. We had, we had moved here prior to that, um, but thought it'd be a great opportunity to, to really help shape uh, a new vision for the community. And, and I, I just, I, I talked to a couple of your peers, uh, your colleagues in years past at a convention I was at, ACCG conference, and they talked highly of you. But I said, we got him now, so, sorry. <laughs> and they were from the state, by the way, so, just <laughs> FYI. So, but with that, thank you again, and we're glad to have you on board, and, and you've done an excellent job when it comes to economic development in Douglas County, and we're gonna talk about kind of where we were, kind of where we are now, and what the future looks like. But I'm gonna pass it back over to my dear friend, Sarah. So, Sarah, the Chamber does a lot for the community and the business community. Mm -hmm. Why the Chamber of Commerce? Well, it's, that's a great question, um, and I feel like the easiest way to respond is to start with a little bit of a story. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that, and I feel like we chatted about this last time, that we realized um, during the pandemic was, you know, we've always had a great presence with our business community and, and have been able to provide the resources, programming, the connections to support growth in our businesses um, in, in Douglas County, whether that's large companies like Google or Switch, all the way down to our home-based and micro-businesses. But during the pandemic, one of the things that we realized is that we had a great footprint, but there was a lot of opportunity to, co to connect other businesses um, with some pretty critical business needs, things like knowing how to operate a business checking account or what a profit and loss statement was or what that the essential resource of having a business plan. So, um, so those are things that we've been able to kind of capitalize on. And I always preach that I'm, I, you know, we're not the doer of all things, and we truly believe in partnering with other organizations that might be a subject matter expert, mm -hmm. such as a small business. Development Center, they offer 
free business consulting to for-profit businesses in a, in a way, in a space that we could try and do that and we would be good at it, but they're amazing and great at it. So it's connecting people with the resources. Right, so you connect those small businesses, large businesses, yes. whatever, with the resources mm -hmm. that possibly will help them from finances to workforce okay. development and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and it's everything. And it could be making a connection with a business. It could be helping them know information about how to do business with the county. It could be public speaking skills. It could be management, you know, management skills. And so we have a great network of partners that we have. We have a wonderful business community and being able to showcase and promote and support our businesses to other businesses is kind of where we put a lot of our focus. So, so my other question though, so with the pandemic, you know, for the last 18, 20 months or whatever mm -hmm. that is, yeah. has been kind of interesting yeah. and very uh, affected mm -hmm. those of businesses, mm -hmm. uh, bottom line. Yeah. What, what recommendations kind of, because we're coming out of that, yeah. but what, what are the recommendations that, that the chamber is kind of suggesting or recommending or? Yeah, um, and it's kind of twofold. I would say one thing that we're leaning on encouraging businesses to do is to develop their skills and continue to develop those skills. Um, reach out and, and you have viable resources, but also it's um, being innovative and, and being and taking the opportunity. You know, there was a lot of creativity that came out of the pandemic um, in businesses pivoting, adding to their business models. Right and just encouraging people to kind of think outside the box on how they do business. Obviously, you know, we work and operate in this remote work environment and a lot of people have been very apprehensive about that, but then leaning in and learning about, you know, it, it you know, eliminates your overhead costs on certain things. Oh, yes. It gives your employees out of benefit. So just helping people understand that the way that they've done business always doesn't have to be that they, they so, do it so in the So will this affect the brick and mortar type of a business versus the internet? business. Yeah, and I think it model, really, I think know. that people have learned to do both and to okay. meet needs. Um, Farmers Table is a great example. They have online ordering for their food, okay. but during the pandemic they use their same platform to do online grocery ordering and mm -hmm. delivery to their house. It's something that Susan had talked about for years, but when it pushed came to shove and they couldn't have people into their store, they pivoted very quickly and and put themselves in some, you know, it put a lot of people in that space of things that they've been talking about doing for a long time and put them into a space where they had to, you know, it was essential to move on to continue to grow their business and so, sustain it. So how do I become a member of the chamber? How do, as a business, as a small business yeah. owner, how do I become a member? What What's the steps? What's that process? Yeah, so we're a membership driven organization. Um, and so there is a fee that's associated with membership dues. Mm -hmm. And um, we consider all of our members investors because mm -hmm. you're investing into our programs and resources that we offer, but you're also investing into the community um, and, and our, and, you know, our business community in general. So if you just visit our website, it's douglascountygeorgia.com. All spelled out and there's a little button that says click to join and then what we do and one and again one of the things I was going to mention about the pandemic is you know we realized that a, you know kind of a catch all like throw a net at everything and everybody you know all needs to all people are the same um, is not the way that that the world operates now and even before mm -hmm. so um, what we have is we have different levels of membership and you invest at the value um, at the level where you find the most oh, so value. there's levels of memberships yes. so it's packages okay. um, mm -hmm. yeah so that way if you know you want to have a ribbon cutting then that's a benefit of a certain package. Okay. If you know you want to do something a little bit more than that, we have a strategic membership that involves a little bit more of the strategic planning space and training for your team. Mm -hmm. um, so it really just depends on where you find value and then you invest at that level. Interesting. Interesting. I, did, I didn't realize, I thought it was just a yeah. member, that's it. Yeah. And we used to have it that way, but okay. then we realized that there are certain benefits that people found value in, right. you know, and instead, and it, and it streamlined our processes from a staff perspective to where we're not casting a net every single time we have something right. um, or we have a benefit, we're able to customize and cater that experience right. the, the, to the each Right, to find the one that fits you yep. as a business, as a small business, and as a looks, large or medium yep. business of some And sort. it looks different to everybody, right. so we're able right. to right. kind of hone There's in no on that fit all. personalized okay. approach. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I like that. I did not know that, though, there so you thank you. You learned so, something new Yes, thank you. Chris, so let's talk about 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 the things in which you bring and, and what you do to the to the county, which kind of go hand in glove mm -hmm. with the Chamber of Commerce. So, I mean, with the Red Cross, the Googles, and all these others that you've kind of brought to the table and made it kind of realist uh, to Douglas County. So, great job. But kind of what is that process? How does that kind of come together, and what that looks like when it comes to being a uh, manufacturing business in Douglas County. Yeah, I mean, it, it starts with a community and kind of knowing what type of business they want to recruit to the community, mm -hmm. understanding what your strengths and your weaknesses are, um, and then going after those strengths. Um, you know, you don't, can't spend a whole lot of time focusing on the weaknesses because you're going to be spinning your wheels. 
So we understand what's the labor pool like in our community, what's the labor pool like in the region, um, what, what's the, the business environment in the region, and then what kind of space do, does Douglas County play in that. And so we spend our time going after what we call our target sector industries. Um, those fit within advanced manufacturing, professional and technology services, and media and entertainment. Okay. And so those are kind of the main categories that we spend our dollars, whether it's marketing, um, recruitment of businesses to the community, um, in hopes that they will consider and expand their business in Douglas. So why, why would I, as a manufacturer, and first of all, how do you go out there and, and attract those businesses and kind of first, and then why would I want to come to Douglas County? Though? Yeah, 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 great, great question. So um, we first, you got to make sure your website's up to date. So okay. it's making sure your data is current, okay. making sure that you're actually telling the story about who the community is. And we do that through kind of directly going to particular industries. So we'll go to conferences, various trade shows. Um, we'll talk with site selection consultants to really say, hey, as you're working with your clients, as they're considering expanding their business, we hope that you would consider Douglas County. We do that at the state level, at the regional level. We work with the development community, real estate brokers. We hit every angle we possibly can to ensure that Douglas County is top of mind uh, for, for those businesses. So, so the state kind of has a list of folks that come to the state and say, I want to possibly do X. I want to bring business X, Google, to somewhere in the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just asking, that, is that kind of so that process? And then they'll kind of give you a call from the state or do Google call you up directly and say, hey, Chris, I just wanted, I just thought about, I think Douglas County looks like they got enough land for me to build out X, Y, and Z. It, it actually happens both ways. Okay. okay. So yeah, so in, in some instances, they go directly to the state and they're really telling the state, here are my parameters, here's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And so we want the state to be familiar with us. For those that don't know, there's 159 counties in the state of Georgia. There's one Department of Economic Development, and so you want to make sure that you're that you that they know and think of you when those calls come in. So they're looking at parameters first, and so then it's the state's responsibility to identify which communities can meet those parameters, and that's when the first calls start to come. So you're well connected, probably with the state guys coming from the state. You're well connected to say, okay, you, you kind of know firsthand kind of what's transitioning through and from and going or whatever. So you kind of oh yeah, that might be perfect for Douglas County because, or we got the, the, the right land mass to pull off X and so on. Yeah, it's, it's very important for us to make sure that we maintain those relationships mm -hmm. with, with everyone kind mm -hmm. of in that department, uh, that we're familiar with them, mm -hmm. that they're familiar with us, mm -hmm. that they feel comfortable, that they can call us. A lot of it is just confidence, mm -hmm. confidence in our ability to be able to present ourselves well and mm -hmm. respectable. Um, we don't want to embarrass the state um, because at the end of the day, we're all part of the state. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also don't want to be cut because we, we didn't show ourselves well. So, so what are those, some of those things that, that kind of, that would put you, put you, get you off the list as a, a county? Uh, what are those things like you don't have the right workforce or you don't have the, the land mass or you don't have X? What are those things that, that the state, first of all, give a, uh, uh, a Q and A, like okay, this person you'll fit better in rural Georgia versus Douglas County. Yeah, I mean it starts with what they call a request for information, okay. and that request for information is is already kind of you're pre-selected because you meet the base parameters, and then you fill out that request for information to really kind of further examine how does your community line up, you know, with what this company is looking for. Um, once, if you continue to go through that, not every company, not every community is a match for every company and vice Correct. versa, right? Correct. So there's a ton of projects that come through the door that we just don't win. And it's not necessarily because we did anything wrong, we just don't meet the base parameters that they're looking for. I think the things that happen to, in order to get cut is, you know, we always have to maintain confidentiality, um, which, is very, which is very hard and sometimes frustrating to people because everybody wants to know what you're working on, but we can't talk about it. Um, we have to maintain confidence. Um, we we have to be we, we have to be uh, men and women of our word. So whatever we say that we can do, we have to be able to deliver on what we can do. Uh, so, but I think if you maintain confidence and you maintain integrity in what you're doing, and you meet the parameters, you'll keep going through the process, and it'll come down to a point of cost of doing business. So, Sarah, how how is it the chamber kind of ties into, you know, the economic development side of? The, the development of yeah, the Yeah, so um, we, we do a lot of work together, um, you know, and that could be, I mean, we share some staff um, that support both organizations from a marketing events, you know, so when Chris has prospect visits, we have 
a staff that we share and, and he's tasked with making sure that their events are pristine, that they're representative of the community. Um, so we do a lot of work in that space together. And then I would say we do primarily a lot more work on the back end once the community, once the companies come to Douglas. And it's more of that, I mean, I you know, the words customer service. So it's making sure that we're helping them if it's hiring, hiring companies, you know, we work really closely with Breezy's um, Breezy from Chris's team to make sure that we're able okay, yeah, to make sure that we can market and promote that there are jobs available right. here right. in Douglas. So we kind of work with them um, in, a, in a variety of different ways. And, and speaking of them. the workforce, kind of let's talk about the mm -hmm. workforce. How, how, do, how do you guys kind of come together? And I know we got the, the, the uh, Elevate Douglas. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got Elevate Douglas that kind of go hand in glove with the mm -hmm. Chamber of Commerce to help with the, the, the workforce mm -hmm. uh, or the workforce development mm -hmm. or how do we kind of navigate that, that lane? Yeah, um, I think the easiest way to explain it and Breezy does a great job is that we have, uh, we call it future pipeline and current pipeline or future workforce and current workforce. So the chamber has more of a role in the future workforce so we partner with the schools, the colleges, universities, you know, making sure that the students are well rehearsed in the jobs options that are available here in Douglas. So if it's, you know, if we have a great company that needs auto techs or, you know, diesel mechanics, then we make sure that we have our training those and educating the kids in the schools on those programs. So schools meaning colleges or, or um, high school It goes or all the way down okay. into even, in, to, we've done middle school job fair or career fairs where we're educating students on linemen and the, you know, the financial opportunities that it, you know, and just making sure that students know there's a variety of options when it comes to you know continuing education after graduation it doesn't just have to be a four-year university it could be a technical it could be a certificate it could be just entering the workforce so do you guys kind of work together from that mere fact of we got a company a mm -hmm. that we're looking at this type of a workforce mm -hmm. that we kind of interact or intertwine that with a potential college type of a course mm -hmm. that they could possibly offer or do or educate to kind of get that workforce mm -hmm. Absolutely. guy or girl ready. I mean, Correct. Yeah, and, okay. and we have a whole Breezy operates a workforce collaborative um, that meets with HR managers from the large employers. That sh there are partners with our um, colleges and universities that are here in Douglas and kind of surrounding areas. The school system is involved, so that way, you know, if we know we have a large employer that needs people that can automate, you know, that can operate some sort of piece of equipment, mm -hmm. then that is backed out into creating a pathway, you know, through the high schools that can partner with a technical certificate yes. from one of, like, from West Georgia Tech or something of that nature. So it's kind of creating that that pipeline. We call it cultivating talent, right? So it doesn't just start once they um, graduate um, from high school; it starts even before that. And then we work on the future of pipe, or I guess the current pipeline in making sure that all the employers that are here, that their employees are trained and in the skills that they need and even looking at opportunities to upskill. So Chris, do you guys kind of also kind of intertwine with that? You're looking at company A and that's coming, that looking for this type of a workforce because we, you know, we always kind of task you with how many jobs, <laughs> how many the jobs they're going to offer and that's going to offer to Douglas Countyans. So y you guys kind of kind of check that box as you're going through that whole process, correct? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's a part of the process. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you, you've, you've got all these parameters and that's actually part of the parameters. Mm -hmm. What is the labor pool like? You know, what is the makeup? You know, what are the current skill sets that are already here in the community? Mm -hmm. Those are the questions that we're answering in that RFI process. And part of our sales pitch is what we mm -hmm. do to not only recruit them here, but to help them grow while they're here. Uh, and so, and that all that is really mainly about the workforce pipeline. Um, so it's a huge component of what we do and how we kind of differentiate ourselves. And in some instances, is giving companies the confidence to make a decision on a piece of property that might not have met their timelines, but they felt confident that we could deliver on the workforce and talent side. That they went ahead and said, "We're going to take the risk in investing in this community." So, so how do you also kind of take, I mean, I'm assuming you've got various pieces of land that's out and about that you kind of got your eye on, or, I mean, prime example, we've got the Lee Road uh, project, uh, Cold Silver, what is it called? Uh, project, project Silver. Project Silver. <laughs> project Silver. <laughs> um, that, that's kind of in the pipeline uh, that's coming to fruition, like, mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it takes, it, I tell people all the time, Rome wasn't built in a day. Mm -hmm. And so real estate development takes time, it takes patience, mm -hmm. and takes endurance. Mm -hmm. um, we started focusing on that probably five years mm -hmm. ago and kind of saying, this is, there's new infrastructure that the county is planning to put in. 
What we want to do is what we've, we've heard from this community, we've heard from the citizens about what they want to see in the community, and sometimes we have to step up and take the lead in actually making that happen. Correct. And so you engage the community, you do the master planning process, you do the financial analysis, you work on the strategy, then you start bringing the, the, the various players together. And so we sought after that, not knowing who was going to be at the end of it, Correct. but you at least had to have a plan in place where you could actually then go out and market that to others and say, we have an opportunity for you. So when we first started five years ago, we didn't expect Project Silver, we just expected something. Right, right, and so Project Silver turns out to be that, that something. And that's a huge, great mm -hmm. potential uh, for Douglas County. Mm -hmm. uh, and can we mention some of the things that could potentially be there and the layout or how, how much can you share? Because I know there's confidentiality. Uh, that's why we're calling it Project Silver. Mm -hmm. uh, so is there, how much more can you say to the general public, to our viewers, as to kind of what can we expect, what Douglas Countyans can expect on Lee Road? Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got our great congressmen who helped find the dollars from the federal level to even get the bridge kind of reconstructed mm -hmm. and rebuilt and redone. We've got the, um, the uh, Lee Road widening project mm -hmm. that's going to Fairburn and the same thing going to 78, going to Chapel Hills. I mean, so it's gonna touch roughly about three districts and a fourth in the end. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that's there that the general public just don't even know mm -hmm. about. That's economic development for Douglas County and, and that, I guess in five to 10 years, that whole makeup, mm -hmm. that whole look on um, Lee Road is gonna be like, wow. Completely different, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, to the point, yeah, there's certain things we can't say, but I, we've been pretty, you know, forward with kind of talking about the potential of what's gonna happen there um, in conjunction with, with the developers. So we'll be uh, developing about 160 acres um, of a mixed-use development, um, and the whole mixed-use development is called the trails. And so the trails will have commercial retail, uh, residential office development and a movie studio. The movie studio will sit on about 40 acres of that of that development. It'll bring about 2,000 jobs into our community, uh, over 150 million dollars of investment just on that piece of the development. So it's a true anchor. It's a driver of the market. It's something that we haven't had here in the community, and that comes back to having proper plans in place, being able to say, how do we want to grow? How do we want to develop? And I mentioned my, our target sectors, media and entertainment was a part of that, right? And so all not of these just, things. Not manufacturing, not, yeah, just, not just right, right. manufacturing. But, right. but I think the public, I'm gonna let you finish though. But the public tend to think, you know, they just bring in manufacturing jobs. They just bring in warehouses and, that, and that's not the case though. There, there's a whole lot more, there's a, there's a bigger picture here, you know, big, bigger picture. So, but go ahead, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. so you, it, it's a paradigm shift for the yes. community. We've mm -hmm. been used to, you know, just residential and warehouse distribution, right? And so we set our goals to branch out beyond that. Um, and that really is kind of setting the market. And so in order to set the market, it's gonna take some time uh, to do that. But like I said, we set it out as one of our targets. And now we're gonna be, it's changing the tone of the future development uh, path for Douglas County, specifically on that corridor. And I know it, and that's what, most don't realize and how interesting this is going to be in Douglas County and and I know you left this part out though but potentially the county you know uh, the administrative building could potentially be in that same location yeah yeah, yeah. it's 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 a true public private partnership absolutely yeah, absolutely true public -private so. Partnership. Mm -hmm. so so with that though uh project silver is just kind of in the makings mm -hmm. um we're going through the process um, and the development authority is kind of sort of what I call taking the lead in getting this project kind of moving. But there are several other projects that you can probably, I don't know if you can speak on or talk about, mm -hmm. that's in the pipeline that we can share with the general public. Yeah, I mean, some are, some are announced, some are in the pipeline. You know, we'll be a little, little uh, silent, more silent about the, the pipeline, but you know, we welcome Microsoft, which is a, a company that we've actually been going after for probably the past eight to 10 years and trying to get them to Douglas County. Uh, and so they are uh, investing in a data center campus here, about a million square feet, uh, over 160 acres, um, creating high quality jobs, paying average salaries of $100,000 a year. Um, put that in context, Douglas County's average hourly wage earned here in the, in the community is about $20 an hour, which, which puts you somewhere around $50,000 $50, a year. Okay. So more than double right. you know, our county right. average wage here uh, in, in the community. 
So we, starting from the east side, we really focused in on the data center development. So Google, Switch, now Microsoft, and we have a couple of others that we hope to announce within the coming months um, within that data center space. The things that we're doing on Fairburn Road, um, kind of being that transition corridor with the mixed use development, what we're doing to uh, redevelop downtown Douglasville with the town green and the, and the private development to come associated with that. Excited that the town green will open up uh, next year, February. So that would be an, an awesome opportunity. It's another thing that attracts businesses, attracts people uh, to, to the community. Um, and an exciting thing that we've been working on for my entire tenure here <laughs> in the community um, with Fox Hall, um, which was a, an, a, a huge uh, support and thanks to the Board of Commissioners for supporting that effort to finally get that over the hurdle um, to where we're gonna have a world-class resort and conference center right here in our community. And so we're no longer just going after the manufacturing or the distribution mm -hmm. businesses. There's a lot. We have a true diverse yes, mix yes, of opportunities yes. here in the community. Yeah, and, and, and speaking of Foxhall, that, that connectivity, that at least the close proximity mm -hmm. to the airport yeah. is a huge, it's a huge plus. Yeah. Now, you know, you got to understand the bigger picture to understand how that is a benefit to us to have that there. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm glad that Fox Hall has finally kind of yeah. crossed the hurdle. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's been a, a huge hurdle we've been trying to jump and get there, but it, it appears that we're going to get there now. Yeah. So, so on the chamber side, mm -hmm. incentives. Yes. What, what are the incentives that as a, as a business owner, yet along as a, just Joe who's got a mom and pop mm -hmm. hair salon, yeah. you know, what, what are the incentives that gives me a reasoning like, I gotta be a part of the chamber because, yeah. you know. Yeah, um, it falls into a couple of different buckets. Obviously we have people that want the access to our events and programming that we have. Um, some people that's, you know, that's their primary focus as far as business development goes. Um, so that's definitely a big draw. Um, other incentives, you know, we advocate and we can probably serve as the voice of business for our community. Um, we're kind of the only game in town that can advocate. Um, the county can educate, Chris's organization can educate, but we can truly take a stand and support some of the economic development tools that Chris was referring to that drive economic development in our community. So um, we serve as an advocacy arm and making sure our businesses are represented on a local, state and federal level is something that that we make sure is very important, especially, you know, over the last couple of years with all the different red tape that's been going on and navigating those spaces. Um, that's been definitely something that's kind of bubbled up as something that people find a great value in. Um, leadership development opportunities. I know as yes. a proud graduate of Leadership Douglas, all of us here. 2012. 2012. 2012. Yeah. Uh, 2012. Best 2012. class ever. Exactly. Well, oh yeah, that's right. Y'all were in. Oh together. goodness. Y'all were in it together. Yeah, yes. Oh Lord. Um, I think I've heard other rumors about y'all's class. Um, but yeah, but leadership development okay. opportunities. So we have just um, rolled out our new three-year strategic plan with the chamber. And there's a huge focus on uh, um, developing like a leadership pipeline. So ma no matter where you are in your life or your career, we have programming and leadership development for high school students, for young professionals, mm -hmm. for seasoned professionals, uh, mentoring programs, um, just to meet people where they're at in regards to their leadership development. Because those skills, if, even if you start at the top as a, you know, as the owner of a company and you have three staff, like those leadership skills will, um, you know, they'll trickle down um, no matter what role you have in the company. So, um, so those are really our main focus. Um, you know, we offer obviously incentives around posting jobs and ho uh, hosting ribbon cuttings, things of that nature. Um, but those are kind of the four areas of focus. So um, leadership, advocacy, member engagement, and connecting them with people. And, um, and then partnering with Chris um, in regards to economic and workforce development and small how, business. How, be honest, you can tell yeah. our, our viewers, but yes. how, how tough is it working with Chris though? Oh, it's some, awful. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, we have a great partnership. I and know we've, you guys And we've do. kind of um, yes. um, elaborated on that over the past two years in creating a formalized partnership between the Chamber and Elevate Douglas to share staff. Um, we all, we both of our organizations have the same North Star in driving economic development and growth in our community and it looks different and we can both kind of bring unique assets to the table um, but then together, it just makes us stronger, as, as Chris always says, to truly elevate the profile yes, of our community. Yes. And, and I'm so glad and proud that you guys have created Elevate Douglas. But it was before, something before that. I just can't mm -hmm. remember. I'm, I'm having a... Douglas, Douglas Unite. Unite. Yes, yeah. okay, right, okay. Yeah. But, but, we rebranded. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm so glad. I'm so, so Chris glad. Chris and I didn't get to pick the name of the first one. <laughs> but we're here now. Yes, we Elevate are. Douglas. <laughs> elevate Douglas. And, and I'm so glad that we did, though. Not that the other one was bad or anything. Mm -hmm. I think they both, you know, had yeah. their, their purpose and their season and now we're here. But it, it only, 
ignite and help and, and, and rejuvenate the, the, the citizens of Douglas County yet along the economic side of Douglas County that's really needed. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a smart move. Mm -hmm. But I think you guys kind of pulled it off mm -hmm. by pulling us together and making it make sense yeah. as to why we move in this direction. There, so. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, conversation prior to, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we were all partnering together and collaborating from a city and county, you know, our strategic yes. leadership space. But at the end of the day, who's waking up, living and breathing that this is their goal? to meet the needs of the community and um, economic development strategic plan who you know and that fell back into the chamber and elevate Douglas and that's why we built out something that sustains all different kinds of changes that we could go through and truly puts the focus and it's not just our organizations but it's all of our partners all kind of nodding their heads in the right direction smart smart I think that was great Chris talk to me about or talk to our viewing audience about uh, the infrastructure that's kind of goes along with kind of what you guys do and kind of how we get to that that whole development side of because I know from the county's perspective that that plug that you guys really need to kind of lay out the infrastructure uh, to kind of move this or, or potentially attract that business mm -hmm. you know some even from the water and sewer you know layout mm -hmm. you know so there's a there's a whole lot of pieces that kind of come together to kind of get you to where you are yeah yeah with, with without quality uh, infrastructure there, we, you, our hands are tied. <laughs> right, yeah, right, there's, yeah. there's nothing we right, can do. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the, there's been a lot of foresight and leadership, you know, from the county, you know, over the years, and kind of looking at growth areas in the community, and investing in infrastructure. Um, just we think about, you know, years and years ago, there was infrastructure that was invested to put sewer um, along Riverside Parkway. That's uh, and without that sewer infrastructure that was put in, we wouldn't have had the Googles mm -hmm. of the world, the Medlines, the American Red Cross, the tributary neighborhood, all those you know, developments take place. We wouldn't have had that you know, without that infrastructure. When it was put in, those didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And now that it's there, they do exist. Uh, similarly with transportation and road infrastructure, it was why we identified that property on Lee Road. Because of that Lee Road widening, because of that Lee Road extension, that southern inner arc, we said this is an opportunity to leverage f future development. So development needs infrastructure. You know, the public plays the, infra the, public plays the infrastructure role, mm -hmm. the private sector plays the vertical role. And so that's how the public-private roles, you know, come uh, into fruition. And so we're really grateful for that infrastructure coming to play. And, and I must say to my colleagues, it was great that they kind of had the vision mm -hmm. <laughs> to kind of, you know, invest in the infrastructure mm -hmm. because without us, you know, kind of seeing the vision as to the Lee Roads, the, the Fox Hall and mm -hmm. so on, the, it, 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 it wouldn't be, we wouldn't be yeah. here. We, we, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So it, it's good that we've got the foresight and kind of can see down the road. Now, all of us don't see it. Right. <laughs> Sometimes it takes some right. others to come along, yeah. you know, but eventually we kind of sort of get there. But when we get there, I think it's a, it's a, it's a huge plus. What about the incentives that, that we offer even those the, from the workforce perspective by hiring Douglas Villians? Uh, what's your two chests of incentive Chris, that you got out there that, that's, that's kind of enticing to those businesses, year long, that benefits the community? Yeah, the incentives, they range from state level to local. Mm -hmm. um, there's various tax credits for job creation. There's uh, workforce grants uh, that are available um, through the region. Um, there's also an incentive through the state for workforce training. Um, at the local level, we, um, from a development authority standpoint, we pr primarily focus on property taxes. Uh, and so there's property tax breaks that um, are are available for certain companies. So abatements, uh, let's, yeah. just, just, mm -hmm. let's just call it, because I know some people don't like to hear that. Yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. but if, if we don't, if we don't offer that, if you don't have that in your tool chest, then it becomes a problem because Paulden, Fulton, Cobb, and others, you know, to get the Googles, to get the Red Cross, to get mm -hmm. the Switch, that why, I can go there and, and they're gonna offer me all these bells and whistles, why would not? Now, again, you've done well at the structuring of that, mm -hmm. which makes a whole lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And we benefit from the, having that business here, uh, the potential employer, employees type mm -hmm. of a layout. So there's a whole lot of benefactors that down the road, I mean, that will benefit up front and down the road, will, yeah. it'll still pay off. Yeah, and, that, and that's something actually it was, it was, it made me think about when Sarah was talking about the, the members of the chamber. You know, a lot of, when we work with these companies, we tell them up front, we don't wanna just recruit you here and then you go build your building and you stay over there. 
you know, we want you to be a part of the community. It's very important that they're a part of the community, especially when we're using, you know, these incentives, leveraging these incentives to attract them here. So many of those businesses are now, you know, some at the, some of them at the highest levels, mm -hmm. you know, of the chamber, engage with the chamber and understanding what the opportunities are here in the community, investing here, hiring here, um, and really just being a part of the community. So that, that's that's very important for us. But to your point about the, those incentives, yes, every just about every county is offering incentives, and if they're not, there's probably not a lot of economic development happening in those communities. And that's that's nationwide. I mean, yes. it is a globally competitive marketplace when these companies are deciding to invest um, and, and expand their businesses. So we have to remain competitive. What I always tell people, though, we've got over 5,000 businesses in Douglas County. And on average, between 10 to 13 or so businesses are on a property tax abatement plan. Understood. And, and the benefactor to the citizens of Douglas County for the homeowners is that balancing of what I call that economic development or that, that, that business with the property tax owners who are paying that bill for the services and everything that, they, that we provide. Well, here's an offsetting mode because if not, if we didn't have this, meaning the businesses, then you will be strictly property owners, uh, millage rate mm -hmm. taxed, mm -hmm. yeah. period. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a benefit in this though. Yeah, yeah, You're, those, those businesses, they also have what they call a multiplier effect. Mm -hmm. So they're attracting other businesses, you know, to the area, if they're a manufacturer, they're bringing suppliers. Within the data center space, there's a ton of vendors that are now coming into the community. When you have more job creation, now you have more demand for restaurants and, and retail operations. Those are all 100% tax. Homeowners, you have people, yeah. housing. Housing, yes. Yeah, all of yeah. these things are growing the tax base. Yes. Uh, and so, yes, that business itself will have a break. Mm -hmm. It's not a 100% break, That's but they correct. will have a break. They're still paying some taxes, mm -hmm. but they also are encouraging other development to happen. Absolutely, and yeah. it offsets your millage rate exactly. when you do the math. Mm -hmm. Because if I, I know there out of the 159 counties, there are some counties that don't have no mm -hmm. business, no economic development at all, mm -hmm. and they're strictly paying for their services through the millage rate or mm -hmm. the property owners. Period. Exactly. That's okay. I'm not mad yeah. at them, mm -hmm. but that's that's your structure, and it works for them. Yeah. Well, and I think that they do a great job too um, when working projects. It's not a you know. There's lots of communities, and Chris can probably speak better to this of just like throwing everything out on the table and just saying anything anything we can do to get you here. But it's also making sure that it's a good fit for our community Absolutely. and being mindful of yes. those incentives. So it's not you know. I feel like that's fair to say is they don't always roll out the first thing out the gate is oh, we've got all these offers and incentives and abatements and, you know, it's always a very strategic process that Chris and his team works through to, like I said, make sure it's a good fit for our community, but also a good fit for the business that's coming here. Here's what I will say, Chris, and I think you, and I don't mean to say this to be, you know, negative, but I think Chris understands that he's got to cross that board of yeah. commissioners yeah. And, and, and if you're going to offer yeah. that incentive, you know, abatement, you better have a good reasoning it's as gotta, to why. Yeah. It's got to make sense. It, yeah. So to offer it doesn't mean as my mom say, diddly squat. Yeah. I, don't know, <laughs> I know that phrase. I know that phrase. So, but but the, 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 the focus is, this is why it makes sense. Mm -hmm. This is why we should have this business here. Here are all the benefactors mm -hmm. and, and bringing them here and blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. So it, it makes sense. And I, and I think both you guys know, and definitely you, Chris, you know, that you, you got to cross that next level of, yes, you may offer it, but would the BOC say yes to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tell, business, tell, tell companies all the time, whatever we offer, we have to be able to defend. That's right. And if, 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 this is a, if this isn't defensible, then we're not bringing it forward. If we know that this is something that the community is not really excited about or really wants to see happen in the community, then we, we're gonna be responsive to that. Uh, and so we, like what, I said, we only go after our target sectors. Well, it's called smart growth. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. See, it, it's about smart growth. And, and Chris, you and I, we have all these kind of conversations ongoing until you, mm -hmm. uh, Sarah, as well. It's about smart growth. It's gotta make mm -hmm. sense. It's gotta be a benefactor to the citizens of, of Douglas County and the future of Douglas mm -hmm. County. If it doesn't make sense, I, I'm not I'm not in. If it makes sense and I can see why and how this will benefit us, then I'm, I'm like, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay, guys, we're coming to a close. And I know it's, it's been good. I, I know this has all been some great information. I know it, I know it. Yeah. But, but Chris, I, I, I want the short story, but I really want to know, 
like the businesses that, that, that kind of where we came from as Douglas County, and let's say 10, 15 years ago to kind of where we are, and then kind of what the future looks like. Can you give us, you know, our viewers that, that short story so the District Dialogue viewers can understand like, wow, this, because we've done a lot, because I went to one of your uh, uh, outings, and I was just like amazed that I didn't realize, mm -hmm. you know, I've been on since 2000 as the Vice Mayor in, in the City of Douglasville, and now as a Commissioner, that all these things has transpired, and it's like, Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. So can you do that? Can you give yeah. me the short story? Because yeah. I know that I, when, when Not I was the there, it was minute an version. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think some of it we, you know, we've, we've covered during this dialogue. Yes. But, you know, when I came to Douglas, we were primarily just known as a bedroom community with a regional mall. Uh, and that, you know, folks would just come to the community and they would invest and, and that would be, would be it. But we really wanted to set a purpose and a tone. So even when industrial developers were coming to the community, we told them up front, this is what we want, this is what we'll support, and this is what we won't support. And so some of those developers invested anyways, and they realized that you know, the will of the community is strong. Uh, and so we had one developer who came in to develop a 500 acre park, with the focus of that being a warehouse and distribution park. Um, mm -hmm. Fast forward, you know, about eight years later, that's now the home of Microsoft, Gordon Food Service, and a couple of a couple of other data centers that are in their in their park because that's what we said this is what we want to go after and now we made it come to fruition and so we looked at the various corridors in the community that's how the trails development came about setting a new tone a new path for the community now that will ignite further development focus on Fairburn Road from the north to the south we said the same down on Caps Ferry the infrastructure as you mentioned earlier was very important to leverage the Foxhall development and Weston Foxhall to move forward, for preserve life to move forward. And now we have a ton of other projects. We have a visit tomorrow, you know, down in that area because of the things we were able to move forward. Um, and I think going forward in the future, I think the west side, you know, the northwest corridor uh, of the county has a lot of promise. It's one where we need to put infrastructure in, we need to plan it right, and, and continue to grow our community in a smart, in a smart way. Um, that we continue to be a destination for business and people. And as I stated, it's about smart growth. Mm -hmm. It's got to make sense. Okay, so with that, I mean, I, I don't want to keep us too much more longer, but any closing remarks that you guys would like to say to our District Dialogue family uh, about from economic development from a Chamber and mm -hmm. Commerce perspective and from a Development Authority perspective, kind of what that looks like and just kind of what, what they can expect and all that other good stuff. So any closing remarks before we kind of bring this thing to a close? Yeah, I, I mean, I can start. I think that um, my charge would be to be an engaged citizen, right? So there are tons of opportunities when we are, you know, when we have town hall meetings and, and you know, events with the chamber or community, even in your, even in your neighborhood, uh, your HOA, right? There's opportunities for you to be an engaged citizen. And that looks different for everybody, whether it's as a business owner, as a parent in the schools, um, but just to be an engaged citizen, because we are all at, um, you know, at a leadership level in the community between the city, the county, the schools, economic development, chamber, other companies and organizations, water and sewer, we're all having these conversations about the transformational growth of our community. And I always preach, I only hear what, I, you know, I only know what I know, and unless others are sharing that information with us and being engaged and attending county commission meetings or yes. wherever. Um, it's, School it's, board meetings, city. Yeah, anything. Uh, yes, um, yes, yes. Go to your, your church, you know, fellowship yes. meetings. Um, but just being an engaged citizen, I think is truly important. I know from a chamber standpoint, um, like I said, we're rolling out our three year strategic plan. We've got some exciting new initiatives, specifically in the diversity, equity, and inclusion space that we're rolling out this year. Some things to meet the needs of specific industries um, in, in our um, community and um, some other exciting things. So be sure to just kind of stay tuned for all the things that we have coming out um, from the chamber, but also in partnership with Chris and his team. So. How can they reach you? How yes. can they can they kind of tap into all of your stuff? I mean, That's I feel a whole like lot. my cell phone number is out for every, no, I'm kidding. Um, so the easiest way to reach us is um, through our website, douglascountygeorgia.com com and it's all spelled out. Um, we're also located in downtown Douglasville so we welcome visitors um, during the week and um, you know you can always get my contact information like I said from the website but I'm always happy to sit down and make time to talk with people even if it's you know helping them understand something you know a concept or a policy or you know we did a big project with the redevelopment powers law um, two years ago and that's a very complex thing so helping people even if it's not me connecting with resources to help break it down so that it's digestible information. And what they don't realize all that you guys do as a chamber 
Douglas County Chamber, they, they don't realize that. Mm -hmm. They just think, oh, you just want a dollar and 50 cents for me <laughs> to be a part of the chamber. Yeah. And what am I getting out of this? <laughs> yeah. There's a whole lot yeah. that's there and, and a lot that we haven't even shared. Mm -hmm. We haven't even graced the surface, but okay, we'll, we'll yes. leave it there. Chris, any closing remarks for you? Yeah, I think I echo Sarah's comments about being engaged in the community. You know, you also have like the Citizens Academies, mm -hmm. you know, that you do for the city and the county. I think those are opportunities engaged, you know, in the chamber through Leadership Douglas, you learn more about your community uh, that way. Um, you know, people always ask us, you know, about, you know, why we don't have certain things in the community. Um, our, we try and keep our website uh, up to date. If you just go to elevatedouglas.com, um, if you want to learn about the various demographics of the community and, and different um, tapestries within the community, you can see all of that. You want to see what, if you're a small business and you're looking for a, a property to, you know, move your business into, we have a properties database if you can you can look at that as well and you can also play with the map if you're like me you, you like playing with map interactive maps <laughs> you do love maps <laughs> so yeah I, I love maps so mm -hmm. if you want to check that out um, feel free to, to do that um, but yeah I mean in, engagement is, is is number one um, we're rolling out our new strategic plan um, we're rolling out our capital campaign for Elevate Douglas um, now we just approved that last week and so we're really excited about what the future holds and we're going to do a much better job now of telling our story for the community to better understand of the impact that we make uh, in, in the community. I too agree. We got to tell our own story mm -hmm. and, and we got to see the future from the BOC perspective and a, a community and economic development perspective to understand kind of what that really is and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And if you can kind of see it and you can envision it and you can kind of see the Project Silver, then you can understand it mm -hmm. better. And then you as a community got to kind of get engaged to understand what Project Silver, and I'm only using that as a hypothetical. Yeah. yeah, but Project Silver, what it is, what it looks like, what it could be, you know, because there's a whole lot that it could be. And it may, some tend to say this, you know, I don't want it in my backyard. You know, why put it over there, put it over here. I mean, does it make sense for the future of Douglas County? Do you see the bigger picture? Or you just only see it from where you sit and that's only your, that's your backyard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get it and I understand it. And I know that's the struggle that you guys always have to include myself as one of the commissioners is trying to get you to understand, not you, get you to understand that in your backyard mm -hmm. is probably the best place, the most efficient place and probably where this Douglas County is going and it only makes sense. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it gets to, thank you guys. Yeah, thank oh you. my thank God. You thank us. you guys. Yes. This is, this was really good. This yeah. is really good. It's, it's, it's a great, a lot of information and I'm just I just want to say to you guys thank you for at least sharing yeah. uh, we missed a whole lot but I, they can go and visit your website uh, Sarah and Chris as to your website and if you get engaged I think you'll find that there's a lot that wasn't even said here because there's just so much mm -hmm. because we've come a long way so with that being said thank you again to our Douglas uh, County um, uh, community for just watching District Dialogue. I really appreciate it. I'm Commissioner Mitchell and just enjoy your day, but tell a friend to watch this segment. This is really huge. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.